It started with just like six of us, then it went to 12, 20, and the whole time we've 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 just created space for God to minister and move. Uh, yes, there's been teaching. Yes, there's been um, the traditional facets of church. We've had that, but it's always been unto the presence of God just taking over and wrecking us. I'm so sorry. So that's been very beautiful, but our kids grew up in an atmosphere in our home where we would worship and we would have people in and they, just his presence has been such, it's just been such an integral part of our marriage. And then especially, you know, when we had kids of raising them in his presence and just knowing God's not, it's not some cerebral, you know, he's not a theological concept, but he's real and he's accessible and learning to not only encounter him in, in his presence, you know, with people in our home, with worship, but as a family, and even for me and my husband, just I think I would say God himself and his presence is a foundation of our lives, our marriage, our family. I couldn't, I wouldn't know how to parent or do marriage without the Lord. I think the thing that has kept me close with the Lord is just finally realizing how easy it is to know Him and to love Him and to be His friend. I think I put so many expectations on myself of what it looked like to be a Christian my whole life, and those expectations were like a burden, and they crushed me every single time. And I think when I finally met Jesus just as my friend, and that was all that He wanted from me, He didn't want anything else but friendship. When I realized that, everything became like so much easier. And so it's no longer like a to-do list of things that I need to do throughout a week to make sure that I'm 
acting a certain way or like behaving like a Christian should behave. It's just friendship with the man and and that's how easy it is. It's simple. Just join with his song over us tonight. By confessing the name of Jesus, you got grafted into this plan and it's a plan of redemption that's still playing out today. And so the Maranatha cry, as much as it is about what's to come, it's also understanding what has been. We're stuck in this tension of the kingdom is here and the kingdom is coming. There's this, this hope of glory that's within us, but this hope of glory that's coming. And we need to emphasize both, but, but one leads to the other and the other leads to one. Like there's this beautiful tension and dance between these two realities. And you have people that are like, it's all about the now. And I'm like, yes, it's about the now, but it's also about the until. It's all about the until. Yes, it is about the until, but it's also about the now. There's this urgency in the here and the now that the Maranatha cry brings. It's not an escapist like, oh God, bail us out. It's there's a coming kingdom that's within me. There's a coming kingdom that's around me. There's a coming kingdom that you're invited into. to learn actually from Latin America and the Latin American church. Um, what God is doing there is unbelievable. Yeah. The churches I've connected with, the purity, the zeal, the hunger for, for the Lord, it, it, it's so convicting. And so it's the honor of my ministry so far is, is my relationship with Marcos and what God's about to do in South America. I just yeah. am happy to have a front row seat.
I know. I just, I'm deciding where I'm going to go. Um, it's better than I could have ever, ever dreamed of. It's better than I could have ever planned. It's making music, making music with my family, with my best friends, and all of a sudden, like, we started off in this building at Oaklawn, you know, and, and then just worshiping together because we love the Lord. And, ooh, and, and then coming to this building, you know, and the fact that I get to be a part of it, whether it's singing, whether it's setting up, whatever, it's just, I'm just so honored because it's such an answer to my prayers, but it's so much different than I thought, but it's better.
Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hey, are we opening up the front? Front is open. Awesome. All right, we're going to get started. The front is open. I just confirmed. You can bring your kiddos down here. We just asked that at least one parent is down here with your kid. I'm excited to worship with you guys. Anybody's first time here? Got any first timers? Nice. Welcome. Well, we're gonna worship. Let's just take a deep breath. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for another day we get to be alive and to meet with you. And Lord, we just don't take that for granted. We just thank you for another day. Let's just, let's just still our hearts before the Lord and just become aware of him. but just engage your heart with the Lord and just become aware of his presence. He's here today. He's been moving last night service, this morning before. He's just been moving. So let's just focus our heart, become aware of his presence.
name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is great. We bless the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is great. Yes, we bless the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is great. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is great.
those with like, mental illness or depression, anxiety, just place your hand on your head. And I feel like the Lord wants to heal those who've had night terrors, who've been kept up in the night by the enemy, and just break that off in Jesus' name. Jehovah Rapha, the healer, the great physician, you know what we need. So we just pray healing, whether it's the body or the mind, Lord, we just pray healing. Whether it's oppression, we pray deliverance, Lord, for the captives today. I thank you that your name is powerful. It has the power to save. Thank you for your name, Jesus. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your name. And there will be no this up. I feel like he's just doing the work. We don't have to strive. We can just look at him. <laughs> like you, there's no one beside you. You alone worthy of all praise. There will be no
Scripture says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Those who trust in it run into it and are saved. And as beautiful as that statement is, it's not just beautiful, it's real. That his name, the perfection of his nature, the goodness of his character, the delight in his countenance is a strong tower a place of refuge, a place of rest for our weariness, for our minds, for our hearts. The atmosphere of his presence, his personhood, his affection is a place of rest where our souls are strengthened, our bodies are renewed. <laughs> we have access to the salvation in his name at all times, in whatever we're in. And so together we declare your name, Jesus, as the name exalted above every opinion, above every circumstance, above every thought, above every situation. Your name is high and exalted. Your name is lifted up. Your name is the name above any other full of integrity, wholeness, authority and truth your name is salvation so we declare the name of the lord we declare the name of the lord the name of jesus in our hearts and in our midst we declare that you are exalted have your way lord have your way amen thank you guys can we thank the team for leading us?
As you make your way back to your seat, would you say hello to someone, greet someone? I'm sure there's visitors in the house. Let's make them feel welcome up a room. If we can put the ways to give on the screen. This is a continuation of worship, right? We don't wanna just overflow with our hearts, we wanna overflow with our stuff, right? And so, if you're part of the Upper Room family, hello, it's good to see you again. If you'll Look up here, this is the um, ways for you to bring your tithes and offerings um, as a member of the family. If you're visiting, then by all means, tithe to your local church. But if you want to make an offering and sow into what the Lord's doing here, um, we bless you. We'll receive that. You can give the same ways um, on, those, on the screen. So um, thank you so much for your generosity and giving. We cannot do it without you. Uh, and then second, um, I want to make you aware that we are hosting uh, a prophetic workshop, uh, February 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, it'll be here in this room. And if you come from um, uh, maybe a church background that didn't um, believe in or teach about the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, specifically prophecy, or you didn't grow up in church and that's kind of some new language for you and you want some solid biblical teaching, but you also want to be activated to step into your birthright as a son and daughter of God to hear his voice and to be his mouthpiece. Um, if that's something that uh, you want to uh, receive, then we are hosting a workshop um, uh, over that uh, weekend, beginning Thursday evening, uh, Friday during the day, and then Saturday as well. It's $35. I think it's $25 for students, and that just covers the cost of uh, materials. And so you can register online, urdallas.com slash events. Come and join us. It's going to be an awesome couple days. All right. Can we stand and rightfully celebrate and honor Peter Lewis? Amen. Amen. The gun show, says Peter Slover. Praise God. Thank you for that encouragement. Calling things that are not as though they are. There's a prophet in our midst. <laughs> wow. Worship was amazing. Thank you, Brett and team. Can we honor them again? So good. My overflow peeps, I see you in there. It's anointed in there. God is there. You gathered there in his name as well. So Jesus is there, and you're going to encounter him this morning. Um, open your Bible to Psalm 102, verse 4. <clears throat> I'm going to read a, a verse, and then we're going to pray. Um, we've been looking at the Lord's table. Um, we believe that God is, is awakening the church in this hour to the communion table, amen? How many of you, God has been speaking to you about communion, like a reawakening, raise your hand. Okay, awesome. So we, we wanna say yes, when the spirit begins to speak something, we honor him by getting in step with him. This is like upper room, heart, vision 101. We don't care about setting up our own vision, our own desire, we want what the spirit of God is saying, amen? And so we try to just constantly live in this tension of, of planning, of prayerfully planning and considering, but also keeping our ear like humble and tender towards the voice of God so that when he begins to speak something, we can get in step with him. And we really sense an urgency in this hour for the body of Christ to come back to the Lord's table, to, to not only have a spirit of wisdom and revelation around the body and blood of Jesus, um, but, but everything that happens around the table of the Lord. And so you're gonna hear um, from this place a lot of, of teaching, impartation, and experiential encounter around the Lord's table in the weeks to come, perhaps this whole year. And so just to build your faith in case you kind of think, man, that's gonna get boring, um, <clears throat> I wanna encourage you. 
The table of the Lord is anything but boring. There is wonder working power and glory and intoxication and joy and gladness and fellowship and togetherness and healing and deliverance in heaven coming to earth. Come on, in renewing of the mind and feasting in the presence of your enemies. I can't think of anything more awesome than just eating a ribeye in the presence of my enemies and just getting glad while I'm supposed to be getting discouraged. Come on. I love sitting in the presence of my enemies and just feasting on God's going, mm, 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 mm. and whatever the thing is that torments you, that lies to you, that tries to intimidate you, God has set a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And I shared this last week about, about God doesn't, I think sometimes we wait to feast until the enemies are all gone. We wait to have joy. We wait for our heart to be strengthened until he completely wipes out our enemies, but that's not God's design. His design is to feed you and to nourish you in the presence of your enemies. It is the greatest act of warfare, healing, deliverance that I know, and it's biblical to eat and to drink and to be anointed by God. That's what the table of the Lord is about, is literally drinking the wine of the Spirit, eating the bread, the grace of God, and then, and then just being smeared and anointed by God. Everything at the table happens to you. Hey, I like that. Um, so let's read this, because I think sometimes this happens. Psalm 102, verse four, says, my heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread. <laughs> Father, um, we know there's a battle waging for our hearts this morning. There's been a battle and there will continue to be a battle for our hearts. And we know that, that ultimately you've won that battle. But my prayer this morning for us, all of us, Lord, is that, is that at your table, through the bread of life, through the cup of covenant, that you would strengthen the hearts of your people this morning. You would strengthen our hearts, you would strengthen our mortal bodies as we sing about Jehovah Rapha, that you would heal, that you would deliver, and that you would save. Help us to remember to eat our bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. Um, well, last week we talked about the cup of blessing, the cup of covenant, the cup of remembrance, the cup of a clean conscience. The, the cup of the Lord is powerful, it's mighty, and it is to intoxicate you in the love of God. Um, and we talked about the importance in these days to come that we as believers learn to enjoy God. Um, it, uh, there's so much at stake right now for your heart that if you do not learn as a believer to actually enjoy fellowship with God, I don't think we're gonna make it to the end. It's, it's joy that produces endurance in the hearts of God's people. And I, and I touched briefly on joy is more than just dancing in a worship setting. It, it's beyond that. It's, it's this consciousness of the love of God that causes us out there in the world to do things that are unthinkable. Forgive our betrayer. Wash the feet of our betrayer. Love instead of curse. Bless instead of hold grudges, show up at our, at our jobs and, and work for an unfair boss with integrity. Like these are the kind of things that, that, that you cannot do without the joy and the wine of God's spirit, amen? And, and in addition to that, we talked about Psalm 23, at the table of the Lord, you have the bread, the oil, and the wine. And so I wanna talk about though today, um, the bread of life. Um, Jesus said in John six, he says, I am the bread of life. Um, and I wanna talk specifically what I believe that means for us and God's desire to heal his people. We sang about it this morning, uh, but I wanna, I wanna open a can of worms uh, because I know for many of us, it's a can of worms, amen? God's desire to heal people physically, like miracles, signs, wonders, amen? This is the God we serve. And so um, I wanted to read Psalm 102 because I feel like this illustrates Maybe why many of us, our heart feels this way. Um, he says, my heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread. 
Now you could read that and say, well, maybe, maybe his heart was a condition, then he forgot to eat his bread. I think this is, he forgot, he forgot to eat the source of his strength. He forgot to partake. He forgot where his life came from. In this, in Bible times, I know this is hard to think, 2023, we live in Dallas, and there is a war against bread right now, against gluten. There just is. I heard the other day, you know, someone was like, bread is poison. I'm like, okay, this is a little intense. And I understand it's different bread, I get it. Don't at me. But listen, in Bible times, bread was like a staple meal. Like, it was the meal. Y'all are like, oh no, I would be fat back then. <laughs> you would be healthy <laughs> back then. And so, and so look at this, Psalm 104. Watch this. Psalm 104, verse uh, 14. 104, 14 says this. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate that he man may bring forth food from the earth, wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. So bread, bread will strengthen your heart. There's another verse in Hebrews that talks about it is, it is good, um, Food sacrificed to idols is nothing, and it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace. And I think, church, we need to learn to eat the bread of God. I think so many of us are so busy trying to, to obtain grace through other means other than simply consuming the bread of God. Now, I wanna break this down real practically. In John 6, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, and he says this, he says, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is what? My flesh. So what was he referring to in John 6 when they said it was a hard saying, they couldn't understand it? What was Jesus actually, when would Jesus give his flesh as the life of the world? The cross. So, he, so in John 6, it was a hard saying because they, didn't, they hadn't seen the cross yet. But now it doesn't have to be a hard saying. We know that when he said, my my flesh is true food. We know he's talking about, about the moment that he would give his flesh would be the cross. Now what, what is the overarching message of the cross to mankind? There's a message in the cross. There's a, there's a meal in the cross. What's the message? Say it loud like you know it. Love. It's I love you. It's just God saying I love you. I love you, I love you in your sin, I love you in your mess. I'm gonna love you in all of your state, I love you. And, and I'm gonna prove my love, I'm not gonna just shout from heaven, I love you. I'm gonna demonstrate my love by dying on a cross while you were in sin, while you were in rebellion, while you were far from me. I'm going to tell you I love you in your worst state so that you would never, ever, 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 ever be confused that I love you. And this love through remembrance of this meal, see, see the psalmist forgot to eat his bread. Do you know what I think we can interpret that today? He forgot, to, he forgot the love of God. He forgot the love of God. He forgot that God was loving and so his heart withered away. I think at the root of every heart that is discouraged this morning, it's that you forgot the love of God. And you can have bread in front of you. Some of you, you just finished this fast. You have an iron will. Praise God. The Spirit helped you. You're like, I'm not eating carbs for 21 days. <laughs> and that's good. You fast the bread. But then it's time to eat bread now. And just because you have bread, it, I love the psalmist says, he goes, I forgot to eat my bread. Not I don't have bread. I forgot to eat it. Meaning I had it at my table. I just didn't eat it. And I think this is many of us as we overcomplicate the love of God. We, we, we think that there needs to be some condition just right to eat the love of God. I wanna tell you, every moment of every day is the perfect time to eat the love of God. And my prayer for us is that our minds would be renewed to the reality that God is willing to feed us the bread of his body, his flesh, at any moment of any day if we will simply pause, remember, and just receive. 
And something happens, you're like, oh, that seems kind of mystical and weird. Something happens when you're driving down your car, in your car, and you turn the radio off and you put your phone away, and you just remember that the Son of God died on a cross, and it was his way of saying, I love you. And his I love you 2,000 years ago was intended to give you confidence that his I love you would show up today in many forms, in many ways. One of the ways God, God shows, says I love you today is that he just says, he just encourages you. Like he just tells you what he likes about you. He's just like, hey, I delight in you. Do you know how awesome your day would be if we would learn to just hear our Father's voice going, I think you're, I think you're amazing. That we, would, that we would humble our hearts soft enough to hear our Father just build us up. How many of us know a God who just, who just builds you up, who just speaks into your life and goes, I think you're crushing it as a husband. Wow, I think you're an amazing dad. I think you're an amazing wife, an amazing, like, here, here's, a, here's a tip, maybe a swing key, if you will. <laughs> the area where you feel most accused is the bullseye where your father actually wants to feed you bread. Try it right now. The area where you're most being accused is the area the Father wants to build you up and it's just bread. Here, I love you. We have to demystify and de-religiousify. It's not even a word, but you know what I mean. We're like the cross, the cross, the love of God. Yes, but it has to come into today. It comes with a voice, it comes with affection, it comes with an embrace, it comes with a touch, it comes with, with breakthrough and miracles and healing and deliverance and wonder-working power. Come on, the early church, do you know what they preached? Do you know what the message was? The resurrection of Jesus. They were like, he's alive. He's alive. That was Acts. He's alive. We testify. He's alive. He's not dead. He's alive. God is alive. He was dead, but now he's alive. Come on. And that there's power. And you're like, well, how do you know he's alive? And they're like, hey, crippled guy, get up. And he's like, whoosh. And he's like, wow. Like the gods have come down among us. Come on. We are desperate in these days. People are desperate to know that our God is alive. And one of the first ways they know he's alive is we're just drunk. We've just been drinking the wine of his love, and we're like, ooh wowzers he's amazing and they're like what's wrong with you don't you see what's happening in culture in the world and yeah I do see what's happening I'm not ignorant of that and I'm not unwilling to go into that but man I am drinking from this wine and this love that is incredible and I'm looking at these people that everyone's afraid of and I just feel love towards them is something wrong with me am I okay people that everyone's accusing the, from different political parties and different races and colors, I actually feel love welling up in my heart. I feel compassion. Am I okay? <laughs> Come on. That's how intoxicated people are. They look at people and they're not their enemies. They're like, I love these people. All right. So we have wine and oil and bread. This is the Christian life. These three things have to come in full focus for us. Go to Matthew chapter four. The upper room, early on, early, early, early beginning, there were two things that were, that were happening uh, on a regular basis that marked us. Um, and, and this that I wanna talk about this morning about God's desire to heal physically um, is something very, very, very deep in my heart. I don't teach about it a lot. I don't preach about it a lot. Um, but the scriptures um, of Jesus healing people in my Bible, I have wept over. Um, it moves me. It moves me to think about not the fact that he did it, but to think about the people who were crippled and lame and blind, who in a moment, who in a moment were transformed. I think about them. I think about, I think about the story from that perspective. I think about, I think about the, the, guy, the guy whose daughter died. And they were like, hey, don't trouble the teacher anymore. The, the little girl's dead. <laughs> I think about that moment. See, we read that and we read it real calm and real like, oh, because we know the end of the story. But for the father, that wasn't a good day. And Jesus walks in and everyone's weeping 
And he says, guys, don't weep. The little girl's not dead, she's asleep. You know what the Bible says? It says that they laughed at him. You know why they laughed? You know why they laughed at truth? It says because they knew. Hear me, they knew she was dead. So they're laughing, the source of their laughing and mocking of truth was their own knowledge because their own knowledge only stemmed from what they could perceive seeing dimly through a mirror. They didn't have the full picture. They didn't understand the kingdom of heaven that was in their midst. They didn't understand there was a different realm that had just come with Jesus. There was an eternal unseen realm that was invading the natural realm. And so what they knew was their highest realm of consciousness. That's what they knew. They knew she was dead. And he says, oh, little girl, wake up. Because to Jesus, when people are dead, they're really just asleep. Come on. This is the, this is the perspective for the believer that death is just sleep. The sting of death is removed in that phrase. If you're not a believer, death is final. But for the believer, there is eternal life. And that if death comes knocking on our mortal body, we say, hi, how are you doing? And we continue on to be with Jesus. We will continue forever in him. The Bible says it's appointed for man to die. And after that comes judgment. But Christ is coming a second time, not in reference to sin, but to save those eagerly waiting for him. I don't know about you, but I've died once. Come on, who's died once? I died. So now guess what we get to do? We get to live. We get to live unto God, not, no longer afraid of death. Okay. Matthew 4. Here's the invitation. Matthew 4, 17. Bread of life. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was John the Baptist's message. This was Jesus' message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was the, the message he gave to his disciples. Repent, for the kingdom's at hand. I love this message. It's still applicable today. I know we know it, but I want to invite us to revisit it. Oh, I was sharing about Upper Room. Early on, we saw tons of prophetic ministry. Shout out to the prophetic workshop. Um, we saw so much public prophetic ministry. It was amazing. It marked our community early on. Words of knowledge um, and healing uh, was just, it was awesome in those early days. And so I believe this is a, this is a well that God is wanting to redig in our midst. He wants to see the prophetic flowing purely and mightily like a river in our midst, that people would walk in and surely God is in this place. I'm talking about the authentic gift of prophecy, not, not like, I'm talking about the real thing. I'm not gonna teach on that, but the real thing, come on. The real, like your jaw drops in like Walmart parking lot kind of gear, you know, like where you just get drilled and you know that you know that you know that God is in your midst. And I'm talking about real healing. I wanna testify to you, Jesus is continuing to heal people today. You know why? Because he's a healer. And I'm, I'm gonna start this off by testifying, I'm aware that there's a tremendous amount of pain, disappointment, and, and, and stuff in our hearts surrounding this message and surrounding the fact that God would heal, but, but he didn't heal, but like I'm, I'm speaking personally in the midst. I've got the, I've got the word of God, but I also have my life experience that, that has things in my heart of, of pain. Losing my brother to cancer when I was four years old, praying for, for Amy Williams years ago, Justin, and this mother of four, and she, like not only did we pray, but then I went to be her pallbearer. She was like, I don't know, 30 years old, 40 years old, died of cancer. And so, yet we've also seen people healed. Shelby Slaughter's here. Where is she? Somewhere. She's in the kids. Our children's minister was dead. 
and she's alive. Our children's minister, watching your kids. Don't forget to eat bread. That's bread. There's bread there. So Jesus invites everyone. This was his global message. Guys, if you're willing to change your mind and, and to stop thinking that what you see and feel and touch, disease, sickness, demon oppression, blindness, crippledness, if you're willing, if you're just willing to be humble enough to, to for a moment, change the way that you're thinking, you'll experience and see my kingdom. You're gonna, you're gonna taste of a different realm because I'm a king of a different realm. And I'm gonna show you what my kingdom is like. Come on, are we not seeking first the kingdom of God. Lord, we are seeking a different realm that does not have sickness, demonic oppression, disease. Are you not? Like, my heart is seeking a homeland. Oh, I'm not seeking a good tomorrow, a 401k. My eyes are set on a homeland. Uh, there is a reality where Jesus rules and reigns that's majestic. Oh, where his name and the beauty of who he is touches everything. Oh, come on, we know it's Jesus. Jesus makes heaven heaven, but Jesus is so awesome that everything he touches is made beautiful. Heaven is beautiful because it's filled with him. And so he says, guys, repent for the kingdom of heaven. Now look at this, verse 23. And he went throughout all Galilee teaching in their synagogues. He's just reading Torah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. What's the gospel of the kingdom? It's the good news that there's, there's a way out of all of this sickness and pain and bondage that you're in. That's the good news of the kingdom. Hey, there's, there's something more than what you see. There's hope. That's the gospel of the kingdom. You have hope. Come on, hear me, church. I'm speaking to you. There's hope for your marriage, for, your, for whatever you're facing, for your future. There's hope. Look at what this man did, Jesus. Healing every disease. This is so... just good. Every affliction among the people, every disease. You gotta see it in your Bible. He healed every disease and every affliction. How abundant. This was not a lottery system, y'all. This was Black Friday with unlimited resources and unlimited supply, and everyone had unlimited money. There was no one leaving that they didn't feel like they got a good deal. This was wholesale everyone, every disease, everywhere. You have to experience the joy. How many of you have been healed physically? Oh, come on. I remember I, I was playing soccer, and I jacked up my ankle really bad. You remember this? Level 10 pain on my couch. I called Wade Aaron. Wade was a middle school teacher at the time who's just, y'all know how he is. Red beard Wade, real serious but awesome. I called him, I said, Wade, pray for my ankle. Guys, level 10, I'm on my back, elevated with ice, couldn't move it. He's in, the, in a break in between class. <laughs> pain, get out of that foot. <laughs> Gotta go right now. <laughs> All right, man, let me know how it goes. I went from my couch to my bed. I got to my bed and it was a level two. I'm standing up and I'm like, what in the world? My foot, like 10 to two. That's not, that's not psychosomatic, that's God. God himself, through the prayer of the saint, Wade, touched my ankle. God hates sickness. I've read my Bible, I've concluded he hates sickness, he hates disease, he hates demons, and he hates death, he hates it. He hates it. <laughs> Look at this. So his fame spread throughout all Syria and they brought him all the sick. They brought him all the sick. They brought him all the sick. 
What am I doing? Why am I staying here? You guys are like, tell me, give me some more information. I'm calling you to remember so you can begin eating bread so that your heart will open up to what God wants to do this morning. I, I could teach you for, I, could, I literally, this is probably my most passionate subject in the scriptures. I could theologically lay out for you why I believe it's God's will to heal. Matthew 6.10. Hey, Jesus, hey, how do we pray? This is how I want you to pray. Lord's Prayer. Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. Is there sickness in heaven? He told you and I to pray. You pray this. You've been praying it all since you were a little kid. Oh, your kingdom come, your will be done. He's saying, what's he saying? He's saying, here's how you pray. You begin to ask your Father who's in heaven for the realities of the kingdom of God to come where? To earth. The will of God, is it being done in heaven? Yes. Is there any hindrance to the will of God in heaven? No. So your kingdom come, your good, pleasing, perfect will be done. Where? What about us? Well, how, brother, we can't pray. We know Jesus is a healer, but what about us? The Great Commission. Hey, guys, baptize all these folks. Disciple them. Watch this and teach them to observe what? All that I commanded you. So, so the Great Commission in Discipleship is about teaching us, 2023, to observe all that he commanded them. Matthew 10, hey guys, here's, the, here's given authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. Can, we, can I just pop a big bubble in this? There's a lot of weirdness around who gets to heal the sick and cast out devils. And I read in my Bible in Matthew 10, it says Jesus gave them authority. They didn't earn authority. They didn't jump through spiritual hoops to get authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. No, no, it, read it in your Bible, because I don't, you guys are looking at me funny. Matthew 10, then we're gonna do a bread tunnel. Y'all heard of a fire tunnel? We're gonna do a bread tunnel this morning. Huh. No fire tunnel, bread tunnel. We have real bread for you. We have real bread and we have real bread. Huh. Matthew 10, he called his 12 and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out. That's what you do with devils, you cast them out. You don't play with them, you don't name them, you don't medicate them, you cast them out. I'm not trying to be offensive, but man, if you study the life of Jesus, the primary activity, preaching, teaching, prayer, casting out devils, healing the sick. And then you look at the early church, preaching, teaching, ministry to the sick, casting out devils. This is Christian activity. Entire chapters of the Bible are devoted to people being healed. Do you think God maybe wanted to get something across to us? So that's why we're taking the entire morning and we're going to believe that God's going to heal and deliver every single person in this room, watching in the overflow, and praise God for technology, watching online. You may say, this guy's crazy. I'm believing for all. I read about all, and I, I'm, not, I'm not believing for all because I'm trying to be some cocky, like, oh, we want all. I just believe it's in the heart of God. I actually believe he loves you. I believe he loves your body. I believe Jesus loves your body. He lo oh, hear me. He loves your mortal body. He loves your frame. He loves your image. He loves how, like, he loves all of how you are. And he doesn't love when there's sickness in your body. He does not love that. He doesn't love when there's disease. He doesn't love when there's an addiction that's tormenting your mind. He does not love that. Can he love you in it? Yep. And I believe one of the expressions of his love, I, I, we, we have this awesome revelation of the mercy and compassion of God, but the mercy and compassion of God biblically resulted in an explosion of his power and liberation. Like God's love doesn't just leave you in the condition that you're in. He saves people. Does he not, church? Wonder-working, awesome, majestic power in salvation. Oh man, I feel the fire of God in my bones. He gave them authority over 
unclean spirits and to heal every disease and every affliction. This is so offensive. In a moment, he's like, hey guys, here you go. And in case we were confused, he said, freely you have received, meaning you didn't earn any of this. So freely give it. And so that's what we're gonna do this morning. Is that okay? I believe that there's many in this room and God wants to touch you physically. And so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up our ministry team who is, they're just trained lovers of God who love him. They're gonna lay hands. We're gonna, we're gonna feed you bread from this side. So we're gonna start a line that'll be right at this pole and it'll wind as wide as we can. So the end will be by this man in the, in the you can wave at us. That will be the end of the line. So let's not like snake the line here, okay? So we're gonna have a, a team here and then some staff and elders are gonna be here. Oscar, if you wanna come up. The band's gonna come back up. Now here's what we're gonna do though. For those of us who need healing or deliverance, you're gonna come and, and really, really we're just believing that the bread of God is enough. Can I tell you, it's not some crazy anointed long-winded prayer that heals the sick and, and sets people free. I think sometimes we pray so long because we don't actually believe it's gonna happen. We're like praying ourselves out of unbelief. We're like, God, I know you can do it. God, I know you can do it. And we're like, if you know we can do it, just say be healed and lay your hands on them. <laughs> I'm serious. And then if it doesn't, then you just keep, you keep continuing in the will of God. It's not some lottery system, amen? Are you guys okay? God can do a lot with a little. He who's healing folks with a shadow. Oh, y'all are. So, so don't go to sleep on me. Many of you, you need to be healed. You need to be delivered. You need your heart to be healed. You need your physical body to be healed. You need deliverance. Some of you, you need deliverance this morning. There is no shame. The Bible is filled with people getting delivered of demons. I have been delivered of demons. I remember I didn't even know I had demons. This woman laid hands on me, power of God. She goes, demons, you come out. And I was laying there just And she, I was like, I have demons? And she's like, you will not manifest. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, don't manifest. Because I was like starting to twitch a little bit. I'm like, yeah, don't do that. I was there for it. First time I ever encountered the power of God like that. I'm getting tased on the ground. It was, I was a Bible church kid. I didn't know, guys. It was Father, Son, Holy Bible. And then I got, God pulled my SIM card out. And he was like, he was like, no, you're done. You're done. And I love it. We need power encounters today. And I believe as you, so Anna Claire, she's going to break bread. Watch this. Pay attention real careful. It's a few things. Oscar, you can begin to play. She's gonna feed you bread. This is the bread of God. Can I have a piece? It's challah bread. It's not the foam stuff in your little deal. Come on, praise God. So she's gonna give you a piece of bread. You can eat it right away. This is the broken body of Jesus for your healing and for your wholeness. And so as you eat it, I believe with all of my heart that it's the simplicity of just receiving God and his love for you. If he gave you Christ, how will he not along with him freely give you all things? So you're gonna eat your bread and you're just gonna enjoy the bread of God, enjoy the, the taste of it in your mouth, enjoy the fact that God loves you. It's his delight to heal you this morning. It's his delight to show you mercy. And there's gonna be someone ushering you. I'm gonna be there just to lay hands and just smile at you. God's a happy healer, is he not? And you're gonna find an open person. Can my ministry team come up and my staff and my elders just line here and here? Yeah, not, no, yeah, two lines. We're gonna do one here, one here. So there's gonna be a lot of people to pray with you. Yeah, one, y'all back up, y'all back up and you can guys go all the way to the stage. So you're gonna go to one person and the one person's just gonna simply lay your hands and say, be free, be healed. And they're gonna smile and bless you in Jesus' name and then you're gonna walk on through and God's gonna touch you and he's gonna heal you. Now listen, the rest of you, you're not off the hook. I want you to stand to your feet. We are the body of Christ. I do not want you to go to sleep right now. 
I want you to engage your spirit and to let the river of God flow out of your belly and to believe that God is going to supernaturally move among those walking through this line. Come on, do we not care? Or do we not care about the health, the health and the wholeness of God's people? And so they're gonna lead us in worship and so I want you to engage. We're gonna stir the waters of the spirit and pray. Father, we pray right now, let your kingdom come. Holy Father in heaven, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. God, I thank you. You guys can get lining up and walking through. We're gonna start praying. But Father, I thank you right now for every manner of disease and sickness and demonic oppression in this place to bow the knee, to bow the knee. Lord, every pain in the knees, every arthritis, every autoimmune disease, every barren womb, every cancer, every blood disease, every infection, every addiction to lust and pornography and depression. Yeah, come find someone, come find someone.
as these last ones are being ministered to. If you need actual bread for communion, Anna Claire and team, can we just raise your hand if you want some bread for communion? <laughs> We're gonna pass out the bread. Yeah, just you can just break it and pass it out. You can grab the cup if you want. Raise your hand if, if you know God touched you like in a moment, like significantly. Raise your hand high and keep it high for a minute. Just raise your hand. No, lift your hand high. Look around at the people. Come on. This is Jesus touching his people. Keep your hand up. Please don't get numb. Please don't get numb. And if you are numb, go look at, keep your hand up again. No, this is really important. This is equipping. Go to those people and ask them what happened. Raise your hand high and smile so you look friendly and they think, oh, I'm gonna ask that one. They look real friendly. <laughs> All right. We who are many, we who are many individuals are one people because of this one bread. That your breakthrough and your healing is mine. So take your bread. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, your bread strengthens our hearts, Lord. Thank you that we're not alone. Thank you for your wholeness. Lord, at your table this morning, would you destroy the feeling of anyone that they are alone? By your grace and by your spirit, would you so author a sense of togetherness in these days to come, Lord? A sense of belonging to one another, a true sense of brotherly love and affection would you awaken love in our midst, Lord, in such a real way? Thank you, Lord. We discern and remember your broken body this morning that is life for us, and we receive it with thankful hearts. you had a word about allergies if you have a food allergy or any kind of allergy as we take the cup I'm just gonna believe God's gonna cleanse that she had a specific word of knowledge that God was gonna do that you want to share yeah I just want to share this just real quick the Lord was speaking to me when we were sitting over here and he just spoke to me the scripture from Acts when uh Peter and Cornelius and it says don't call unclean that which God calls clean and I just felt specifically the Lord, there's people here and you've called certain foods unclean and these foods are tormenting your body. And, and the Lord, and it says in Timothy, it says that the, that food is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And every good thing comes from our father of lights and he doesn't change. And I just believe that there's power in the room to heal you of food allergies. And, and God is kind, he's a happy healer. He's not mean, he's not holding out on you. And so I feel like there's even this, this thought of like, he doesn't really care about me enjoying food. And I just declare over you, he wants you to enjoy food. And so if you want to be healed of food allergies, I just believe in the name of Jesus that there's power present for you to be healed today. So Jesus, we lift up this cup. We lift up this cup and we say that it was final that it was final, that when you died on the cross, you conquered sin and sickness and the devil. And I release that in the name of Jesus in this room. And I also release, I say, don't call unclean that which God calls clean. I also speak to a tormenting spirit. 
a tormenting spirit that tells you you're unclean. I declare in the name of Jesus that you're clean and washed by the blood of the lamb. And so I declare that over sick bodies right now in the name of Jesus, I declare you're clean by the blood of the lamb, by the blood of the lamb. And so I thank you, Jesus. And I say every tormenting spirit must go. Every tormenting spirit must go. It must leave in the name of Jesus. Every lying spirit, every accusatory spirit that torments the mind, I declare it must go in Jesus' name. Jesus. And I break the lie that you're a mean father. I thank you, Jesus, that your blood forever tells us that you're kind. Your blood forever tells us that you're loving and you're merciful. And I just say, even if it's the millionth time, if it's the millionth time that you've sinned and you've fallen down in the name of Jesus, I declare this blood makes you whole. Thank you, Jesus. take the cup of your love and we let it nourish us and we let it heal us Jesus and I also just if there's infertility in the room I just declare in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus makes you whole declare that children are a gift from God. So I break the lie that, that you're withholding. I just We just declare your blood is sufficient for that, Lord. Thank you, God, for the provision of your kindness through the blood of Jesus. thank you for this cup we thank you for the wine of your spirit that gladdens the heart and I just declare a blessing as we leave from this place that the intended purpose of the wine of your spirit will begin to just percolate in the souls of your people Lord make us glad again restore the joy of our salvation hearts have become numb and apathetic and spiritually discerned and so knowledgeable that we've forgotten how to just enjoy you God would you help us by the blood of this covenant Lord would would joy of your spirit begin to happen to us would you hijack our consciousness Lord with your love (laughs) would you so overwhelm all the things that would cause us joylessness, worried about what everyone else is thinking, fear of man, all that mess, Lord. We thank you for the wine of your spirit. And I bless every person today, Lord, that they would go in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord would be their strength. Amen. Amen. All right. Smile. Be glad. We love you guys so much. Amen.